Oh, well, they're still me, pulling strings. I wouldn't bother. But some big wigs at Abstergo Industries have been hounding me for days. So, follow whatever leads you find, and hopefully we can... Oh, incoming call. I have to take this. We'll keep in touch. <laughs> Bonne journée. Alan, bonjour. Alright, go back to my workstation. This is just like real life work. So I wonder what, ever, what happened to the assassins. What happened to uh, his father and uh, the other chick? Could you transfer the file from her computer and deliver it to the courier when she comes? Oh wow, there's fish tank, fish tank elevator shafts. And transfer the file. Easy. And please be snappy before I find a reason to hate you too. Well, maybe if you weren't such a dick, people would talk to you. People would like you. Not a problem. This is like Deus Sex. It really is. Now you do too. Don't abuse it. Yeah, this is like Deus Ex, no, 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 the beginning of Deus Ex. Now, you need to bypass the core to find the data inside. Once you reach it, your communicator will download it automatically. You need to find your way around the core to reach the data inside. Uh, what am I even doing with my life? I just went, look, look, I just went through all that. Where is this data? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, no, that's me. Hold on. You, what's the tutorial say? I don't even know what I'm looking for. All right. Blocker. Possibility for infinite loop. Get the data moving in an infinite loop around the sphere. Okay, that's simple. Well, it's not simple, but I understand it. Okay, I see. Kind of. There you go. You cracked it. Good. The file should be downloading. I set up a database for any data you find. Just look for the My File section in your communicator, and you'll be redirected right away. Everything you download will be found in there. Uh, protected by a firewall, of course. Post-mortem report. Oh, shit. Sample recovery unit team lead Fisher Case reporting on subject 17. They found his body. <clears throat> the subject was deceased and unattended. Time of death was placed around 0 hundred hours and 7 minutes, with conditions favorable for DNA sample recovery. We had some initial concerns about interference in the vault, but given the skill and talent of this team, we were able to capture useful data. I personally retrieved the subject's backpack and extracted a number of objects of interest to undergo detailed His phone. analysis. Plane tickets that they used? I remember this. The subject displayed burns to the right hand, severe enough to fuse the bones, indicating some ah. spontaneous, intense burn trauma. Damn. Honestly, we've never seen anything like it before. Head, neck, and torso remained in good condition. There you go. Hand Healthy boy. Recovery agents to retrieve fluid samples, blood and saliva. We then commenced material extraction and were able to preserve several exemplary samples. Ah. There you go. Excellent. The analysis and sequencing is already underway, and I'm told proceeding with exceptional ease. Thanks to the cloud database and the work of Abstergo Sample Recovery Unit 3, the legacy of Subject 17 will continue uninhibited as Sample 17. Damn. Well, at least now we know everything that happened to him. They left his body. Oh, uh, what was it? The people that were with him. What happened to them? Oh, you're better at this than I'd hoped. Now zip on down to the lobby. Come on. See. Hey, look at all the awards she has. Look, she has awards of a bunch I mean, of people. You could, but it's unpleasant. So once you hand it off, just pretend it never happened, okay? Otherwise, you'll just go to bed feeling sad. Anyway, the courier should be waiting downstairs. She's been here Looks like while. people who are I in the story. I saying, just because you now know how to hack all your colleagues' computers, it doesn't mean you should. I mean, not every day, right? <laughs> no, seriously, though, that's illegal, so don't be a dick. Unless hmm. it's your nature. Ah, there's a lot of stuff. Well, let's just hand this off, because I'm going to... I think I'm done. Done for now.
you play as no name, the generic worker. Is this her? Oh, look who's here. So you didn't forget, after all, you're just incredibly rude. And made poor Rebecca here wait for nearly 30 minutes. Oh, wait a minute! Me. Be nice. Here they are! He's high on his own supply. So, how should we do this? Data transfer? She's wait, the courier. We'll email you the receipt. Just and he's the coffee time. man. Bye -bye. Yeah, it's him! And don't expect any more free coffee. She's great, isn't she? It's the girl. Exactly. Hey, I just got word the courier has come and gone. What oh crap, I wonder if that's gonna mean anything in a little bit. That's an exaggeration. You're not a miracle. You're an employee. Doing a job. But thanks for helping out. Anyway, thanks. Have fun pirating. I just I'm spending too long in my animus and it's doing my head in. <laughs> What, you don't like being in the Animus all day and night? Keep it to three hour session. What is this? A barcode. Sticky Note 6. Take, for instance, gunpowder, gun which gave us great mastery over fire. Take, for instance, the Doc Guero type, which warped our way of seeing true life. Take, take the light bulb that gave us light where none was necessary. Take the automobile that sped us along at velocities capable of killing us in new and silly ways. Well, that's my Need for Speed playthrough right there. Okay, so there's a bunch of sticky notes. So it's it's worth your time to like run around and do this stuff and find it. The vacation rule in the handbook. <clears throat> so they basically slice the fuck out of Desmond and turn him into like a lab sample. All right, I can't leave. I'm stuck in here. I wonder how they got inside Abstergo. I wonder if Abstergo knows. I wonder if that's gonna play a role at the end of the game. Kind of like Assassin's Creed uh, 1 and 2. There's a barcode. Here we go. So they're not they're not on the map. You have to find them first. Yes, we submit that we are such tools, and as such, we have a purpose befitting a tool. We we submit we are like hammers and wrenches and shovels made for a specific purpose, not our own. We submit that our purpose is indivisible from the will of those who came before. We submit our bodies and our minds utterly. Gigantic barcodes. See any more? I got no one's asking, why the fuck aren't you in the Animus? That requires level two. Level three. Ow. That's not getting opened anytime soon. Alright, let's go up. Uh, let's go to sample 17. Support to the second floor. There's an assassin's symbol right there. Hey, look! It's Edward! Alright, let's hack this stuff. <clears throat> Cause I am a dick. First of all, any uh, any barcodes? I got the animus is now basically a computer. It really is. Easy. Boom. Let's see what we can get.
It's, uh, what's his name? It was the guy from, uh, Brotherhood and the end of Assassin's Creed 2. I forget. It was the Pope. It was the evil Pope. I don't remember his name. I think he was a Borgia, though. And he had a very unsatisfactory death. But anyway. What was it? I don't remember his name. I think it was Rodrigo. Yeah, Rodrigo Borgia. Well, he's dead. Yeah, Rodrigo Borgia, the family man. Two of 33 computers hacked. Great, my first day on the job. I'm already breaking company rules. Hey, Dad. What? Ah, uh, you know, it's, uh... Subject 17. It's funny. I, I have this memory of you. Uh, what I keep coming back to. And, uh, I, I always think about it when I'm working just before going to bed, uh, because it um, sort of calms me, I guess. Um, I was 14, I think, and, uh, and and you were trying to teach me how to, to walk with a light step. Remember that? How to be mindful of how much noise I made when I moved around. Simple stuff. Stuff I understand now, but back then, I uh, gotta tell you, I thought you were just being... <laughs> an asshole. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you told me you were going to go up to your room and sit with your back to the door and read a book. And you wanted me to wait at least 15 minutes and then sneak up there and tap you on the shoulder without you knowing. I, I even remember the book you were reading at the time, the one by uh, Captain Johnson. And you warned me that if you caught me, we'd have to start all over. Then you went upstairs. And I waited. I waited and I waited and I waited. I waited I four slept. hours before I took a break. to go up. And even then, it took me 20 minutes to get to the foot of the stairs. And uh, another 30 to get up them. And then 10 to get down the hall. And there I was at the door and peeked into your room. And I was, I was so hoping that you'd be asleep. But no. No, you, you were still reading. And I just about shit myself. <laughs> Ten minutes later, he was reading for four hours. Just five feet away from you. And that's when I remember setting my foot down, and you flinched. Ever so slightly, you, you flinched. I thought maybe I'd imagined it, but I knew you'd hurt me. You didn't say anything. Checked your watch, you reached for your drink, you took a sip, and then you kept reading. But I knew I'd failed. You didn't say anything. I, I, I didn't understand why. And I lunged and tapped you on the shoulder, and you turned around, and oh, fantastic, you said, and you scooped me up, and you gave me a big hug, and I didn't say anything. But Dad, Dad, I was so pissed off. I wanted to scream at you, Aww. I failed, and you knew it, but you said nothing. And I stayed mad for weeks. I thought you were, you, you were patronizing me. But maybe you decided right there that I was never going to be the man you wanted me to be. But I realized just a few years ago that you checking your watch... That was the clue, wasn't it? You let me win because I had been so patient. I guess that impressed you. You know, maybe at that moment you thought it might be better to be my dad instead of my mentor. I, I don't really know. 